I'm going to talk about color images. So color is um, the case where we have a vector for in the image values instead of a scalar. Um, commonly it would be expressed in terms of red, green, blue components. So three values in each pixel instead of one. And most grayscale methods are directly applicable to color images. This picture shows the spectrum, how it is split out uh, from incoming white light, and human beings can perceive this range of the spectrum from about 400 nanometers to about 700 or 780 nanometers. A useful way to represent color values is with a color cube like this, where we have three axes, one for red, one for green, one for blue, each ranging from 0 to 1. So each color value is a point within this cube. And this image shows the um, colors along the surfaces of this cube. So this would be um, red here, pure red, pure blue, and pure green over here. And of course the, the point 111 is a white. So we can store color images using explicit RGB values for each pixel, in which case we have a three-dimensional image of um, X, Y, and the band or color index ranging from one, two, or three. And I'm not going to show this today, but you can also use a color map, um, which is more um, concise representation at the expense of some accuracy in the representation. This shows the color values for a sample image. Um, this yellow region here, you can see the pixel values are very high in red and green. And that's uh, red and green in light, when light adds, produce the value uh, yellow. This is a interesting way to visualize the color values. So I've plotted the pixels in this image in the color uh, cube. Didn't plot all of them, but just a subset. But you can see the, the, the pixels don't occupy the entire color space. They tend to cluster together. So for example, the dark blue in the background tends to form a cluster. The green values form a cluster and so forth. An interesting thing we can do with this is to apply principal component analysis to these color vectors. So um, the, the RGB image is composed of three values per pixel, but perhaps we can represent the image more concisely using fewer than three, for example, two. So we start out by treating the image as a collection of vectors. Each vector, of course, is an RGB um, vector. We compute the covariance matrix of this collection of vectors, and then we find the eigenvectors of the covariance matrix, and those are the principal components. So this bit of MATLAB code um, finds the covariance matrix. We first read in the image. Um, it's an RGB image. The MATLAB command m to double scales the uh, values from 0 to 255 to 0 to 1 along each component. Next we want to um, reshape this three-dimensional image into a two-dimensional image where each row is a pixel of RGB values. And MATLAB's reshape function can do that. So this is the incoming matrix and this is the size of the resulting matrix, the height and the width. So I specified that I want uh, a matrix of width 3 and I left the height blank, but MATLAB can figure that out because it knows how many pixels um, it started with, how many values it, it had originally. So we can always get the resulting size by using um, the size function. Next, we'll use MATLAB's function called mean to calculate the mean of the vectors and the function COV to calculate the covariance matrix. So let me... Um, let me run this on um, that image. So I'm just going to copy this code and paste it in to MATLAB. So as you can see, um, here's our original image, which was uh, three-dimensional. 
we have a set of vectors that uh, 196,000 vectors, each of width three. Um, and this is the covariance matrix and the mean. So the mean is of that entire collection of vectors is this value here. It's 0 0.47, 0 0.26, and 0.22. And then we can look at the uh, covariance matrix, which is this three by three matrix. Um, let's see, this shows that the off diagonal elements here and here are fairly small, but the off diagonal elements here are fairly large compared to the on diagonal. This would tell us that the red component and the green component tend to vary together. So these are kind of uh, correlated together. So as if a pixel has a high red value, it generally has a high green value. Um, okay, then we can um, use MATLAB's uh, eig function to calculate the eigenvectors of this matrix. So this um, this D is the eigenvalues, and they're sorted from smallest to largest. Um, and the eigenvectors are the corresponding columns of this matrix V here. So these are the principal components, which are just unit vectors. And what we can do is represent any pixel in that original, any, any of our original vectors as a linear combination of these three principal components. So as we saw before on principal component analysis, um, we can transform the original vectors x to a new set of vectors y that, that are independent, whose components are independent, using this equation here. And um, so each vector x is transformed to a vector y, and those are the coefficients of the principal components making up that vector. So uh, displaying those y vectors um, as images is shown here. Next we can um, approximate the original vectors by using only a subset of the principal components. So here I've discarded the smallest principal component, namely the one corresponding to the smallest eigenvalue and I'm just reconstructing the original vectors using the top two principal components, using this equation. So the resulting RGB values I can display as an image. This is the original image, and this is the reconstructed image. So um, some of the values are pretty close, but others, uh, for example, the green, are not very accurate. This is an interesting thing to see is the reconstructed RGB vectors in the uh, color cube. As you can see, they tend to lie on a plane and that's to be expected because each point, each reconstructed value here is a linear combination of two unit vectors. So namely, it lies in a plane. And if you want to see how I generated these plots and the and those movies uh, this code does that so here are the collection of vectors X I subsampled every 100th pixel just to reduce the number of points I had to plot and used plot 3 to plot each point and use the color as just the point just the RGB RGB values of that point Next, I opened, I created a movie using the AVI file command, set the view, um, the azimuth and elevation, and then once I drew that particular view, I call get frame to capture the image that I created, and then I call add frame to add it to the movie. And finally, um, I close the movie here.